Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. In this video, we are going on a full tour of this Ford Transit. Now this is not just any Ford Transit, it's been repowered by Lightning E-Motors as a full battery electric vehicle. I'm gonna take you through the entire vehicle, the drivetrain setup, some of the other products of Lightning E-Motors, and then we're gonna get it out and take it for a quick drive and see how it does on the road. Starting at the front, you wouldn't really notice anything different about this Transit than any the other it looks pretty much the same it's got a little camera up there in the windshield for lane centering it has a forward collision warning the only difference from the front of this vehicle is this little bubble here in the dashboard with a charging pin on it that's the only thing you're going to notice this particular one is outfitted with a couple extra stickers on the side here denoting it's a lightning e-motors 100 ev which is super neat but this is essentially a Ford Transit that's pretty base. It's a $47,000, $48,000 build. Let me take a look just to be sure. Uh, this particular one is $49,195, excuse me. It has just a few options on it, but you can really spec these however you want from the factory and they work just fine. Before I get into the details, come around the side. You can see this one doesn't have the door on the driver's side, but around back, it's so cool. This one's the Transit 350 HD. That means it's got the dually. It's the longest and tallest Transit you can have in terms of space. You lose nothing in terms of cargo space by going with this conversion. Take a look, whoa, really windy out here. So let me just get those doors open, stay. And I will jump in here just to showcase. I can stand up inside. No problem. Anyone else getting electric RV vibes? That's what I want to do with one of these. So, so neat. Um, I was actually thinking about taking the seats out of this one, but we didn't have enough time with it. I did want to take it on like a camping trip. Perhaps we'll have it back again for another adventure. This particular one's 15 passenger, really cool interior. Uh, all works pretty good. So let me take you around for the rest of the tour. Back up camera, of course, this one has optional parking sensors as well. You can see the dually sitting back there, and then you get the giant sliding door. On this side, it's honestly all normal for transit. <laughs> I don't know why we have an empty bottle of Listerine in here, don't, don't ask me. I think Alyssa, my girlfriend, was getting goat's milk for the dogs, and she wanted to use that, I'm not sure. Anyway, um, yeah, just tons of seats. You wouldn't really notice any difference of, on this van other than this Lightning E-Motors denotion here on the side. Now come with me over to the driver's door because this is where things get a little little interesting, I'd say. Uh, no, this driver's door, just like all transit, just doesn't open very far. It doesn't need to. Plenty of room to get in. But look at this. You have a CCS charging port where there would normally be a fueling pump on this van. And now let's get into some charging. We're gonna get nerdy, of course. You have on this particular version, which uh, before we get into the charging specs, let me take you through how this one is specced. So Lightning E-Motors essentially takes a normal Ford Transit like this one. They put in a electric sled. They build their own drivetrain in-house. They build their battery packs, uh, all from suppliers and they put them in vehicles from class three like this one all the way to class eight like coach buses. It's insane, it's really cool. This particular one is fitted with the two battery pack options. You can get one 43 kilowatt hour battery pack, two of them or three of them. So this one has two, it's the medium range version, it's 86 kilowatt hours. So that gives it with a total estimated range of 125 miles. Now I wanted to test this range during my week of testing with this van, but unfortunately this one's their pre-production mule and wasn't super happy DC fast charging. They assured me this is not a problem on the production versions. I don't see why it would be a problem. So when I get one to test soon, again, we're gonna do some range testing in the city and on the highway. I just wanna make sure I'm able to DC charge. For this week though, I've just relied on AC charging. The peak AC charging speed is 6.6 .6 kilowatt. So basically it's got one onboard charger, 6.6 .6 kilowatts. In a future version of this van, they will have two 6.6 .6 kilowatts and this is gonna be implemented soon. So you have 13 kilowatts of AC charging 
coming soon. That makes sense to me. It's kind of needed with a battery pack this large in a vehicle this inefficient. Now, I say it's inefficient compared to passenger vehicles, but for the medium duty space, about 1.5 miles per kilowatt hour really isn't that bad. So come on back here. We're gonna talk about DC charging. As I showed you before, this one has just the regular CCS charging connector. We were already talking about this. This one can do 200 amps continuous, and that doesn't really sound like much. It's only 80 kilowatts, um, and we don't know the charging curve. I haven't been able to test it, obviously, so it's hard to say if it'll just sit at 80 kilowatts all the way through or if it tapers off very early on. But I will actually say, if you can charge this thing in about an hour and a half to two hours on DC, that's totally fine. I think fleet operations, you gotta take an hour lunch if you're shuttling people. The way I look at this thing is there's so many use cases that this fits into with the charging speed and the efficiency as is, I think they'll be able to sell every application of this. So we've been talking about uh, the construction of the vehicle. It's essentially a Ford Transit and I already can feel the questions coming. What happens when Ford makes their electric transit? Well, here's what's gonna happen. Uh, Ford's gonna make their e-transit, GM's gonna have their medium duty offerings, but Ford is only making a class one and class two transit. Um, we're gonna have Tim Reeser on our weekly Inside EVs podcast. He's the CEO of Lightning Systems and ask him a little bit more detail. But my understanding is Ford is only building cargo vehicles that can't handle the weight of this. This again is a passenger vehicle. If you need to outfit an ambulance or any other heavy duty vehicles, you're gonna have to go with Lightning over a factory Ford. And one of the interesting things about this vehicle is uh, it's all Ford EQVM certified. What that means is Lightning is certified by Ford as a efficient, or I should say an alternative fuel qualified vehicle modifier. So technically this car has a factory Ford warranty on it. Lightning warranties the drivetrain components and Ford warranties the rest of it. So if this mirror stops to work, like the motors inside, if your headlight burns out, if your seat stops working, it's all under Ford vehicle warranty, which I think is one of the coolest things ever. Now let's jump inside. I'm going to run through some of the controls and some of the more specs for you. So to start up the van, I'm just going to put the key to the accessory position. You don't even need to crank it all the way over. I'm going to wait for this little light down here to go green and then we're good to go. Pretty much takes, you know, less than one second, I would say. We're just going to move the van around. So when I do the interior tour, the lights in a better scenario, and we are going to take this for a drive in just a minute, but I do want to show you just how easy it is to maneuver the great turning radius and how silent it is when you move things around. It's actually really neat. So we're just going to back it up so the sun is on the dashboard, at least best we can. Backup camera here, of course, it's on the little four inch sync display. And I think if we just do a little more, that should be pretty good for the shot, I think. Boom. Into park we go, and that's it. Just as easy to drive as a normal vehicle. And now I'm gonna take you on a quick tour. Seating position, everything is the same. You can see HVAC controls, and yes, HVAC works. You have heat, you have AC. So Lightning has a whole thermally managed loop in here with a battery chiller, battery heater, cabin heater, ba you know, cabin AC. It operates just like a normal one. You even retain the rear vents here, so I can go hot, cold for the rear. Uh, for, to heat up or cool down the entire van. So I think that's pretty neat. Everything here that's good from the Ford retains, uh, remains, I should say. Uh, Ford builds one of the best vans ever. These transits are awesome. So you have a USB port, a 12 volt, another USB port, another 12 volt, really good sync system. This screen right here is an aftermarket, you know, uh, lightning systems upgrade. It is pretty glary and sometimes it's hard to see. I can see why they built this bezel around, but I still don't think it's quite enough. All it does is show you your efficiency in miles per kilowatt hour. This one, I've been averaging around 1.5, 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour during my time of testing. And then you also have your uh, projected range and state of charge. For example, right now we're at 10% state of charge. I'm just gonna kick the van on, actually 9% state of charge. And it has a 12 mile estimated range popped up to 10 again. Um, and this is basically uh, about average, about 125 miles on a full charge. So I'd say that is totally fine. When you start it up, you get this hill start assist not available and also cruise control doesn't work. But other than those two niggles, everything else 
totally factory. I was always curious what happens when you put the shifter into the M position. So I can go into drive and then pull it down into M. And even the buttons here, they're just turned off. The car just thinks it's in drive and it doesn't do anything, which I think is super, super neat. Automatic headlights work. Again, the lane centering works really well. If you hit a line, it pushes you back in. Again, everything is truly the same. Let me show you the back of this thing as well. All right, here I go, climbing into the transit, and I don't think they've touched anything back here. There's no intrusion from the battery packs. Again, those two 43 kilowatt hour packs are under the floor right here, and you can have a seat wherever. There's tons of room. There's USB ports for every row. Look, you can just sit back here, and it's really awesome. <laughs> tons of room. I really think uh, this has so much potential for passenger, for cargo, and even for camping applications. I'd love to put a big solar array on the roof and uh, maybe gain some mileage every day who knows but uh, really a fantastic offering here let's go take it for a drive and see how it is out on the road the cost to convert this into an electric vehicle with the dual battery version like we have here essentially the 86 kilowatt hour medium spec option is about ninety thousand dollars and it sounds like a lot of money and that's kind of because it is so let's say with uh, you know a base cost of a transit van like this is about 45 grand for the 350 version uh, maybe 50 grand by the time you put a couple nice options on it then uh, you know if you want to get a bigger screen and stuff like this then uh, yeah you're into this for 140 150 grand uh, for an electric transit. However, um, I think if you're a business especially, uh, this makes sense because there's so many incentives, especially in the state of California, but others as well, that make going for an electric medium duty vehicle like this actually sort of attractive. I mean, we're talking $30,000 plus potentially on the table to help cover this cost. Also, because Lightning E-Motors uh, converts brand new vehicles, what they do is they will have them converted before you actually purchase them. And they're sold as a brand new zero emissions vehicle. So they qualify essentially the same as buying the Tesla Model X, for example. Uh, so, it, which is really neat. I didn't realize that. It's, you can certainly send them your existing transit, but if you're trying to buy a new one, you just go to a dealer in California that I guess they have a couple partners. They'll send the van over for conversion, send it back to the dealer. And then when you purchase it, it's, uh, you qualify for all the brand new tax credits. So I think that's a really neat application. And uh, yeah, super, super cool. I think it actually makes sense. It also from like a cool factor as well. Certainly, you know, for fleets, they're gonna look at the bottom not bottom line. What's the maintenance savings? What's the service savings? What's the daily cost of running savings? And that all will be different depending on the use case for the vehicle. But there is a cool factor and also a driver satisfaction factor and also an image factor where if you are a tech company, you're forward thinking, you're trying to portray yourself as a leader in sustainability, uh, then this, this might be worth spending a few extra thousand dollars on to get it converted. Keep in mind, to the average consumer, 150 grand sounds like a lot, but to a lot of businesses, this is just a drop in the bucket. And uh, I think it's so cool. And I really hope Lightning E-Motors continues to secure orders like they have been because these things just drive so nicely. So Tymon, you're joining us in the Lightning E-Motors Transit. And uh, what do you think about it to start off? What, uh, obviously, uh, we can talk a little bit about electrification, but your general thoughts about this, uh, this van after living with it for the last week. Uh, it's cool. Um, it's not something I would expect. Like the guy we met last night, he's like, didn't even know it was electric. Right, well, you explain that. Uh, so we went to Porsche Fort Collins and this dude was dropping off, uh, tran uh, transporter was dropping off cars and he looked at Kyle like, what are you doing parking next to a Charger? Right, because we pulled up next to the Charger at uh, the Porsche Audi store here in Fort Collins. They have a 150 kilowatt CCS Charger and I wanted to do some DC charging tests. And so we pulled up next to the Charger and the dude's like, why are you parking there? And I'm like, it's electric. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's the thing, no one expects it. Yeah, um, and I think it's really cool how they uh, use the stock motor mounts as well. Oh, from a construction standpoint. Um, I find it really interesting and cool how they just drop the old motor and then just use the stock mounting points for the new electric motor. Right, so they have the sled which they build and then that slides up and, and powers this thing, which is super neat. And that's, again, we talked about it in the beginning of this video, about 160 kilowatt uh, peak output 
uh, what's that, 800 pound feet of torque, nearly 225 horsepower, something like this. And uh, certainly it's enough to get this thing motivated. Look, you put your foot down, it moves pretty good, don't you think? Yeah. You don't need any more, it gets up to top speed pretty quickly. It's got awesome regen pulling into the stoplights. This is just a quick driving review, but I've done, uh, I don't know if it will go up before or after this, but a full city, mountain, and highway driving experience in this, uh, really in depth. Right now we're at 25% state of charge, a little bit low on charge level, but uh, we'll just plug it in and charge it up here in a little bit. So uh, in terms of driving it though, if you watch that video, this is a quick recap more or less. In the city, it's awesome. You never have to touch the brakes. I mean, you drove it around a little bit too. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, it's perfect for city driving. Perfect for city driving. And the purpose of these, like the delivery van for like Amazon and stuff like that, I think it's perfect. Uh, there's not, like they have a fleet right in New York City. Uh, not Amazon, but another company, yeah. yeah I, wouldn't expect it to be used really for anything else besides transport like from a hotel to Aspen let's say to sure. go skiing like a Denver to Aspen route would be pretty neat It'd be cool if we could do that uh, but yeah I think the the interesting thing here is the unique uh, build aspect of these trucks because Ford isn't offering a 350 HD version that'll be electric they're electrifying only the 150 and 250 and no passenger versions so here you're able to build an ambulance, you're able to do people hauling other applications that require the extra GVWR, um, and, and you have to go to Lightning for this, or a similar third party provider. And so I think um, one of my concerns was, are, is there gonna be a risk of, you know, once automakers start making electric vans, or is it just gonna kill this business? And from what we've spoken to them about, it doesn't sound like it at least. Yeah, it seems like no one's attacking the, uh what is this third class yeah what? class three vehicle. yeah class three vehicle and up right I think most manufacturers just stay in below because it's a greater profit for them yeah and the interesting thing to note here is lightning e-motors doesn't build just this transit while this review is purely about this car uh this van we're hopefully going to review other ones we've driven one of the class sixes with air brakes right. which was super neat they have a physical electric motor that powers the air compressor system uh i mean i think they're really doing a lot of neat things over there and you have to admit their van just drives like it came from the factory i think there are a couple downsides though when you put it in park let's say you're doing like stop and go deliveries it kind of hear that clunk yeah it kind of clunks that's annoying and if you're doing that over and over i would like to see them fix that also this particular one's a pre-production van we've had some bugs with um but again that's not necessarily representative of a production version we'll hopefully get one to test and uh, we'll be able to verify if if the issues we experienced here are are there on the on the regular one it doesn't sound like they are so i think we're not going to report on those but just some charging bugs here or there and uh, mostly on the dc charge charging side we have some lights on the dash that are not representative either but it drives fine yeah and it charges up on AC just fine. Uh, now this particular version has a 6.6 .6 kilowatt onboard charger to charge up the two 43 kilowatt hour battery packs. Uh, a future iteration, a hardware upgrade will double that capacity up. Basically a 13 kilowatt onboard charger, two 6.6s will go in, which will be really nice. So the, your home charging, you know, it takes because it's such a big battery and has such a slow charger, it takes this thing forever to charge <laughs> uh, on level two AC. So they're they're increasing that uh, uh, charging speed. Um, what else is there to say about this? It, you know, all of the normal things about the regular transit translate through. Great turning radius, really good handling, good braking system, great suspension, tons of room, good build quality, USB ports everywhere work. Uh, the sync system works. I mean, the car, the, 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 from the Ford side, it just doesn't care that it's electric. Right. It just operates like you just bought this from a Ford dealer, which to me is the most surprising thing. Yeah, it's a good thing about it. It's a great thing because yeah. think about how many like production EVs we drive that are like early stage and they don't even work that well. Yeah. And this works better. <laughs> <laughs> and it drives really nice too. The calibration of the accelerator pedal is so nice. And when you lift off, you get a ton of regen. So you never use your friction brakes. Yeah, it's very simple to drive. Very simple. You just put it in drive and go. No shifting. Instant response. You put your foot down and it goes. Uh, yeah, really got to say very pleased with this if you're interested in more in-depth driving uh, uh, evaluations take a look at our city mountain and highway drive I evaluate every car we test in those three environments and sometimes we add a little bit of dirt and mud to the mix 
just to see how cars drive in the places we think most owners will end up driving them. So time it. Final thoughts on the transit before we end this video? If I owned a company for delivery, let's say like pizza, packages, whatever, I'd buy one. Man, imagine how many pizzas you could fit in this thing. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I, I totally agree. It's expensive to do the retrofit, yeah. but with the tax credits, I think it probably makes sense. Um, but honestly, from the cool factor, I would love it. And personally, I would love it if this was an electric RV. Just like taking this thing around and exploring would be so neat. I would try and get a bigger battery pack though, because... Yeah, a little... Um, I mean, this works for like... New York City. It works perfectly for planned routes. Yes. For last mile delivery where you know where it's going and you know how the driver is going to drive and there's there's tons of applications where this works. But personally what I want to do with it is adventuring is, is kind adventure. of risky. Yeah. yeah, I would say unless you can figure out a way to just cover the roof in solar panels and you just park it for a day and get 30 miles of range. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah. That would be pretty sweet. Well, thanks so much for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. We will catch you on the next one.